Uh, hey guys, uh, welcome to Wireer Help and this is my first video on uh, Spring 5 series and in this video I'm going to give you a quick overview on uh, what is Spring 5 and what are the different modules available and I'm going to give you a quick introduction to uh, dependency injection, uh, what are the different types of dependency injection available and etc. Right now let's talk about what is Spring. Right on a high level, uh, Spring is a very lightweight framework for building uh, different Java applications. Uh, you can develop standalone applications, web, enterprise, and you can develop uh, web services and microservices also. So the reason why I specified lightweight is because uh, you need a minimal, minimal uh, requirements on minimal configurations to integrate the spring web framework into your application so that's why i highlighted light by framework and that is also one of the reason why spring is very famous right now uh, let's talk about uh, different modules uh, provided by spring all right on the very first fundamental level you have spring core and as the name says this is a um, very core framework and this module is used by all other modules and all other modules are developed on top of uh, this spring core module let spring core provides uh, the basic fundamental principles of <clears throat> spring such as uh, dependency dependency injection aspect oriented programming on which we're going to talk in uh, the next series and uh, it also provides a few basic things like um, bean validation and resource management, event management, <clears throat> etc. All right. Now the second uh, famous uh, module is Spring Web. So this is what we'll be talking about in the next upcoming series. And uh, basically, what it does is it gives you an MVC architecture support to develop web applications. And the next thing is uh, Spring Data Access. We all know how difficult it is to embed. Um, JDBC or Hibernate into your application. So that's where Spring comes. It provides uh, a JDBC template mechanism, which is very, very, very slight and simple to integrate JDBC. And uh, it even supports ORM tools like Hibernate and it supports uh, transaction management, etc. It even supports uh, non relational databases also. All right, the next we have a uh, Spring test. So uh, Spring does provide test frameworks on which, which aids, uh, you know, which takes full control of this uh, dependency injection aspect and programming, which makes your life very easier to develop test cases and etc. And it also provides supports like uh, marking your objects, etc. So, and the next we have Spring Cloud. And currently this is a very fastly growing uh, module. Uh, basically, what it does is uh, uh, it aids you to develop and uh, deploy microservices in cloud environment, right? And we uh, we are going to we are even going to talk about this one in upcoming series. Right now, uh, we have our Spring Web Services, um, which supports both REST and so web web services. Right now, uh, it, it even supports so many things like Spring Security, Spring Mobile for developing mobile applications and Spring LDAP. Right now, there are so many things. Uh, these are just the few things which I picked up. If you want to go deep into other modules, you can um, go to spring.io official website and we can see the different projects available in uh, Spring World. So now, next thing I want to discuss about uh, dependency injection. So this is very the uh, very core principle of Spring frameworks. All all the modules which we have discussed now uh, are developed on top of this the basic principle. Now uh, when we talk about a, any Java application or any application, we'll have so many components or objects um, at runtime. So often what what happens is that uh, these components always try to interact with each other. Like for example, uh, I have used the registration class here, and I have a Gmail service. So uh, from here on, I will be I won't use class or objects. So I'll be using a component or pin. So I have a user registration component, which is trying to interact with a Gmail service here. So generally, what we do is uh, just uh, try to create an interface. Email e is equals to, and we'll. Uh, I'll create an object for respect to uh, class. So, uh, so what happens is that you are tightly coupling a Gmail service with uh, 
um, user registration. So in future, if you want to remove Gmail service and if you want to replace with Outlook service or Yahoo Yahoo service, it's going to be very difficult. And for example, if you're trying to test user registration uh, with other services like Outlook services, so it, again, the testing also not going to happen. So this is kind of like tight coupling and we should avoid this uh, at any cost. So that's where uh, Spring framework comes and Spring provides an uh, Spring container on our application context. So what application context does is that um, it, it keeps track, keep track of all the objects or components and it maintains life cycle. And uh, whenever a particular component like user registration requires an uh, components, it will uh, try to give that component to user registration. Now let's see how does that work. Right now, uh, I have a user registration class here. Now, what I'm doing is that I'm not creating a new instance here. Instead, I'm just giving an annotation as auto wired. So, what I'm telling to Spring is that so uh, just give me an email service available. Right now, in order to in order to give you Spring, also need to keep track of uh, email service, and it needs to detect email service in our application. So what we do is that we generally declare as email service as component. So when we declare as component, uh, we are telling to Spring that we are, we are giving a full control of Gmail service to Spring. By the way, um, by that way, Spring can um, create objects and uh, initialize the default values and manages life cycles and scope management and etc. So uh, what uh, Spring does is that uh, it reads the configuration file or scan annot annotations. So currently we are using annotations, but in the real world, you'll be using configuration. So Spring does support XML configuration, which is the very, very old thing now. Uh, most of the time we'll be using Java framework, sorry, Java configuration in the next upcoming series. But uh, currently we are sticking to annotation based for uh, just, just for you to understand very easy. Okay. All right, now, uh, all right, it's gonna scan all the annotations. Uh, basically, it's gonna scan all the components. And what it does is it will uh, create an instance for all the components and it will initialize the components with any values. And, uh, and it will identify the, all the dependencies and it will inject all the dependencies to the respective component. Now we have only one component here so it will create a Gmail service component and it also identifies that user registration is requesting for email service. So it will inject on Gmail service to user registration. So uh, currently it's an uh, annotation, but uh, suppose if you're using Java annotation or XML, uh, XML configuration, sorry, Java configuration or XML configuration, at runtime you can replace uh, Gmail configuration with uh, Outlook or Yahoo, etc. So by this way, what happens is that whenever you are writing a test case, uh, you can easily change the configuration and you can provide Outlook or Yahoo or uh, whatever you are interested, right? So it's all about uh, dependencies. Now let's talk about what are the different types of uh, dependency injections available, right? Uh, currently, what we have seen in last slide is uh, a field annotation. So as the name says, what we're doing is we're directly uh, putting annotation on top of email, sorry, the particular field. So the problem with this is that when you declare like this, yeah, auto wired on email, uh, the other world, uh, I mean, let's say for example, uh, if your test program cannot initiate email service and it cannot provide email service to user registration. So that's because with, you were completely depending on uh, Spring framework to provide email service. So no other component, um, no other framework cannot uh, provide email service to you. So what we do is generally, so we just create and setter for respect to uh, component and we'll, we'll say auto wire on email service. So by this way, uh, Spring will automatically uh, call that set email service, which is a bean specification and it will uh, inject email service to you. And if you have a test program or any other component, even it can inject email service 
uh, to our user registration class. So this is one of the most commonly used um, injection type. And uh, I know that um, field annotation might be very tempting because it's very easy to use, but uh, it's highly not recommended. And uh, so most of the time we'll be using set of injections. All right, and Spring also provide another type of injection called a uh, constructor injection. So the advantage of this one is that you are, it's a, whenever a component is mandatory for you, uh, you'll go with user registry, sorry, constructor injection. Now, uh, if I feel like email service is mandatory for my user registration, I can always uh, pass it through a constructor, right? So these are the different types of injections available. Now, uh, let's talk about a very important concept called scopes. Now, let's take a scenario like this. Uh, I have a Gmail service, which is an uh, Spring component, and uh, I have two uh, classes, user registration and admin registration. All right, now, um, both are requesting for uh, <coughs> Gmail service. Now at runtime we have a Spring container and we all know that uh, Spring container keep tracks of Gmail service. So it will try to give Gmail service to both user and admin. So now the, the thing is that whether it will give the same instance for both user and admin or it will create a new instance whenever we are requesting a, a component. Right, uh, Spring also provides a customization for that. So we can always define a scope annotation with uh, by saying prototype. So when we say prototype, what happens is that whenever you request for a component, it always create a new instance and it will give you that new instance. And on the other hand, if you declare a component as a singleton, it always uh, it will always hold only one instance, uh, which is similar to singleton framework or singleton design pattern. And it will, it will always give you a single instance no matter how many times you try to access it. All right, so on top of uh, prototype on singleton, it also provides a um, few other uh, scopes uh, related to a uh, web world, which is um, request and uh, session. So we're gonna talk about um, request and session and when we talk about Spring MVC, <clears throat> all right. Now uh, enough of theory part. Now I'm just gonna go to my Eclipse. I'm I'm, I'm gonna show you how all these things work. So here I have my demo application, and uh, uh, don't worry about setting up this project. I, I'm gonna take up on this uh, setup on the next video. And uh, I'm using component scan, uh, which basically tells Spring that uh, you have to scan all the available components in my application and I'm giving a base package as com structure. So what Spring does is that it's gonna to go to <clears throat> com package and it will scan all the classes and it will pick up all the classes annotated, annot annotated with the component. All right, so uh, in case if you don't uh, declare this base package, uh, Spring uh, only scans in particular package and it won't scan remaining packages. So always make sure that you give this um, base package. Right now, uh, I have some uh, Spring stuff here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to run uh, Spring application and in return what it's getting is it's returning me an application context which we saw before. So don't forget about, uh, sorry, don't worry about all this stuff. Uh, this is Spring related stuff. Right now, the thing which we want to focus on is our application code here. All right now, if you notice carefully, I'm not uh, initializing this user registration class, uh, Spring automatically does for me. And if you go to my user registration class, and I'm declaring it as a component. So by this way, Spring will create an instance for user registration and it will um, give it to me when I when I say auto wired, all right? Now, uh, if I go to register class, register user method here, and I'm calling an email service here, and if you look at my email service, I'm using a setter injection here. So here in my demo application, I'm calling in a field injection, but here in my user registration, I'm calling a, a setter injection for email service. So here also, I'm not uh, initializing my email service. Uh, Spring automatically initializes for me, so I don't need to worry about and initialization and all those stuff. So this is a um, very straightforward method. And if you see here, again, I'm declaring it as a component. Now, uh, let me just run this and uh, I'm gonna show you how, what, what what's happening. Right. 
so this is all spring boot stuff and uh, if you see here user registration uh, it's printing an um, object to string value so it, it's very nice here and also uh, if you look at my email service it's returning uh, email service also all right so in case let's say for example if i remove this component declaration here spring won't uh, identify this as a component and it will throw us an exception so let me run that one all right so now it's saying uh, so and so user registration is it's not found so uh, i'm going to give uh, i'm going to declare it as component so i'm going to run that again so uh, this is very very uh, simple tutorial guys and in my upcoming <coughs> videos uh, we're going to start with spring mbc and we're going to go a little more deep into spring